What? What are you doing? I thought we were making a video on coloring. It's on coloring. No, like color grading. Color oh, correction. yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes way more sense. Yeah, let's do that. How's it rocking, everybody? Uh, so today, we're gonna talk about how I color my videos, how I color correct them, how I color grade them, all that jazz. And I do just wanna kinda clear the air here and say that I'm not a professional colorist. You know, being a director, a DP editor, I do color a lot of my own projects because most of the time it's not in the budget to hire a colorist. So with that, I have gained some experience in regards to color correction and color grading. When it comes to coloring your footage, there's kinda two steps to coloring. The first step, which would be color correction, and the second would be color grading. Color correction plays on your exposure, your contrast, your white balance, and sometimes even your saturation as well. So I'm gonna be coloring in Premiere today, and anything that I use, like my curves, my saturation, my exposure, all that stuff, that should be available in any other program that you're using. When correcting, you kinda need to know what, what color space did I shoot in. Example would be, did I shoot in log, which is a very flat profile? Or did you shoot in Rec. 709, BT 709, which is a, a normal looking image. The contrast is there, the saturation is there. It's, it's what your final image should kind of look like. So basically, did you shoot in a flat profile or did you shoot in a standard profile? Now the easiest way to color correct would be to use a Macbeth chart or a gray card when you're shooting. I myself don't even own one. I probably should, but I kind of just play everything off of my scopes and then my eyes. So I'm gonna pretend like this is a music video. So we got three shots here. We got our singer and then we got B-roll and then we have another shot of the singer, which is actually the same clip as the first one. So the first thing that I do is I go to my color tab here. We click on our clip. And I'm actually gonna click master. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because that's going to affect the actual raw footage. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in just a second, but this is really helpful for me, especially with music videos, because what I'll do is I'll edit the entire video first, and then I'll go into my color correction and color grade. The first thing that I like to do is bring the contrast back into the image. And the big thing here is you wanna try and set your blacks just above zero and your whites just under 100. Now, one thing I will say with that, you have to think about the contrast, the, the dynamic range in your image. If there isn't a true black and a true white in your image, don't crank it that high. I like to use the curves. I will add a little bit of contrast later on, but I like to use the curves because it gives me the ability to dial that in more. I have more control over the blacks and the whites in my image. So we're gonna bring this down here, keeping an eye on our scopes. I think right about here is good because his shirt is black. Right in here, that is black. I'm gonna bump this up, probably right about there. I'm gonna bring this up a bit because those blacks are a little too black. That looks a little more accurate. And I will come to my basic correction and I will put in a little bit of contrast into the image. Just looking at this image here, I definitely think I need to bring some more saturation into the image. I did shoot this in C200 RAW, so it is a very flat profile. There's not much saturation in the image. I usually bring it up to like 150, and then I take about 10 down in the vibrance. Maybe adjust the exposure just a little bit. Bring the curves down just a scotch, and let's just bring in a little bit of more contrast. One technique that I will use is I will kind of zero out my saturation here and then kind of look at how it looks black and white. How do the blacks look? How do the whites look? Does it look like there's enough contrast in the image? It's a lot easier to see that contrast when the image is black and white rather than color. Bring my saturation back in, but just bring it up to 125. Now that looks good. I would say that this is what the image looked like when we shot it. Now, like I said, I used this clip later on in the sequence. And as you can see, since I edited the master file, all of those changes are already there. Now this one, I do remember my white balance was off. That's kind of why I selected this clip so that I could show you guys if you need to correct anything in your white balance. 
So I'm just gonna add my contrast back in using my curves first, and then we'll we'll talk about white balance. Now you could look at this and you'd be like, all right, yeah, that looks good. But to me, the image looks a little cool. Most of the time, I don't really have to mess around with my temperature and my tint too much because I dial in my color temperature. I'm dialing it into the lights I'm using or, or any of that stuff. But in this case, I forgot to change my color temperature. I was shooting outside at 3200 Kelvin. And for those of you guys who don't know, the sun lives around 5600. So I was a little bit off there. I'm gonna warm the image up by like 30. That's a little too warm, maybe like 25. This is where a gray card would have come in handy because I could just color pick off the gray card like that. And uh, actually that kind of worked out pretty good. But yeah, that's an example of why a color card would be good. You would grab your color picker, color pick off the, the gray card, and then it would fix your color temperature if it was off at all. Uh, another thing that I will do when I'm color correcting, especially with music videos, is I will use my comparison view in Premiere. So if I click that, I can then set a point on my reference monitor that I kind of want to match all the colors up to throughout the whole sequence. I do that because it's helpful to make sure that it's not jarring moving from shot to shot. You want to try and make your contrast and the image look very similar throughout your whole piece. Now that we've corrected all the clips in our sequence, this is where the color grade comes into play. Nice shades. Ooh. Thanks to today's sponsor, Bubble Up, I'm gonna be giving away some free LUTs that you guys can download and use on your files, on your clips, and uh, you know, get some sweet color cinematic stuff going on. I don't, I don't know, just feel free to use them. Bubble Up is a platform that gives you the ability to store and share your files. I've actually been using Bubble Up for the past couple months here and I've been using it to deliver files to clients or share photos, share behind the scenes photos with my crew. I really like how everything is laid out. I like the very visual aspect of Bubble Up. So I do wanna thank Bubble Up for sponsoring this video. If you guys choose to sign up, you can sign up two ways. I do have a link down in the description below for the free cinematic LUTs that you can use to follow along. That's how I'm gonna be color grading these images, or you can use the promo code bubbleup.com slash promo slash Burke and receive 100 gigabytes for one year completely free. Color grading, like I said, is the more creative look on your footage. So things that you're gonna mess around with on color grading would be, you know, your HSL, hue, saturation, luminance, your color wheels, uh, the curves, the RGB curves. So we're gonna come over to our project bin over here and create an adjustment layer. Drag the adjustment layer onto our timeline and string it across all the clips in your sequence. Now, one thing I will say is you can't just slap a lot on your footage and expect it to look good. That's why we already color corrected the image. And there is a possibility that you may slap a lot on and you may need to do some fine tuning from there. So what I do is I place the adjustment layer down onto the sequence, select that, come into my Lumetri color, go into my creative tab and click here on my look. Now, if you are gonna use my LUTs, just download those, save them somewhere where you're gonna remember. For me, I put them in my documents, I put them in a folder called Burke Cullen in LUTs or whatever you wanna call them, I don't really care. Just throw them somewhere that you're gonna remember where they are. You're gonna click browse and then you're gonna go to the folder where those were saved. Uh, for me, I think I'm gonna use this Golden Gate LUT on these. And the cool thing about the adjustment layer is that, so now you can just kind of toggle back and forth and see the image. And for me, I think that looks awesome. And that's pretty much it. That's that's my process for color grading at least. If I was to be creating my own creative look, I would come in here, I'd mess around with the, uh, the color wheels, I'd mess around with my RGB curves, all that stuff. I would even maybe mess around with the tint and the temperature just a little bit to get a more creative look. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me. So see you guys soon.